something like the access point, which is the 3500E for external antennas, it has the ability, because it's MIMO, to attach three antennas in each frequency band. And so in the case of the second antenna, you've just deployed that antenna and you can see the three cables there are going to attach to my three connectors and give me my 3x3 three three MIMO. The second one, I could either deploy just one on one antenna connection or I can deploy two or three of these if I want to leverage off MIMO capabilities. So you have to think about these not only in terms of the gain and the coverage, but also how many do I need if I'm going to deploy 802.11n with the MIMO capabilities. So the last one you can see here is the Yagi antenna and see here how it's got that cylinder on top so you really wouldn't know that's a Yagi antenna. Some people might mistake that for an Omni antenna and so it's really important that if you deployed that on the ceiling for instance you'd be directing the beam straight down to the floor and that would be a disastrous mistake for that deployment. So Here's an example of how it's easy to make a mistake if you really don't look, well, what type of antenna is it and what is the radiation patterns from it? So let's talk about those radiation patterns. So a radiation pattern is literally just a picture of how those signals are radiating out from that antenna. And when you look at the antenna specs, you'll see different terms being used. So um, the azimuth pattern is the pattern that you would see if you look down onto the antenna. The elevation pattern would be if you're looking towards the antenna. What is the pattern you're seeing? So the azimuth pattern is really the one that you primarily look because that's the one that's giving you your coverage. That's the one that will show you that beam. In this case, this Yagi antenna, that beam that's going to go down the aisles of the warehouse. The elevation pattern is an interesting one if you're looking at spillover between floors. This will give you an indication of how much energy is going in the vertical direction. And so you can see that. And indeed, we often call the elevation pattern the vertical, and we call the azimuth pattern referred to as the horizontal pattern. So you'll hear those terms being used as well, and that's why. So I thought it'd be a really good idea now to take a look at an antenna specification. And this is a Cisco antenna. And up here at the top, you can see the product description and number. If we come down to the specification columns, you can see that the antenna type is diversity. What that means is it's got multiple antennas which are receiving the signal. Over here, we can see that this is an omnidirectional antenna. We come down further, we can see that this antenna is operating in the 2400 to 2500 megahertz band, i.e. the 2.4 gigahertz band. The VRISWA, if you haven't heard that expression, that stands for the voltage standing wave ratio. And what that is, is when the waveform, your signal, goes from the cable to the antenna, part of that waveform tends to be reflected back down towards the source. You want to be really careful that you match your connectors and your antennas correctly because if you don't what you get is an impedance mismatch and that's what causes more of that waveform to reflect down and that can be destructive. Here you can see the antenna gain, and so this is talking about the gain of the antenna. And remember, this is in comparison with an isotopic antenna, so it's reflected in dBi. Now, of course, what I'm using this one for is to cover a floor area, maybe in an office. So I'm looking at the azimuth beam, and so it's covering 360 degrees all around the antenna.
Now if I look at the elevation plane, remember that's when I look at it sideways, you can see that this has a 27 degree. And so that's what's reflected in this diagram with the blue pattern. And so if I'm concerned about spillover between the floor above or the floor below, this gives me a measure of what that beam width is and how much is actually going to be spilling over. The measurements here, the length, width, and depth, give me a measurement of the size of the antenna. If I come over here, I see that this antenna is suitable for an indoor environment. Over here is telling me the length of the cable and the type of connection. And I can see it's got a 36 inch connection. And again, the longer the cable, the more my loss. So the shorter the cable, the less loss I'm going to experience. And so always want to keep that as short as possible. At the same time, I need it long enough to give me some flexibility for actually deploying the access point. Here you can see that this is plenium rated. So I can put it in a ceiling that has airflow through it and it will be safe from a fumes perspective in fire conditions. And down here you can see the operating temperature of this antenna. So now you can read antenna specs, yay! So the last thing I need to tell you on this section is antennas are reciprocal. And what do I mean by that? We often think of antennas in the transmitting mode as the radiation leaves the antenna, it forms this pattern. But antennas are reciprocal, i.e. when we think about them receiving energy, they receive with the same pattern. So if I have a 3 dB gain from the access point to the client, I also have a 3 dB gain from the client to the access point. So it works in both directions. So if I form a directional beam, from the access point to the client, not only am I transmitting on that narrow beam, but I'm receiving energy on that narrow beam as well. So now we're going to talk about how do you select what antenna you want to use for your deployment. Now, when you're doing your site survey and you've marked down on your form, where the access point should go. It's also very important to define what external antennas need to be implemented. And not only what antennas should be implemented, but also the direction that those antennas should be implemented using. I have seen so many times that someone will say, deploy this antenna, but the installers often don't understand antennas. And so they deploy it, perhaps pointing downwards, like that Yagi antenna that I showed you an example of. They won't realize it's a Yagi antenna, and they'll just point it towards the floor or something like that. So you need to define what antennas and also which direction that they're facing in. So let's take a look at this section. Now, as I mentioned before, most Wireless LAN deployments will be using internal antennas. External antennas are really not the norm. And one of the things that happens when you deploy an external antenna is you need to run a cable from your access point to the antenna. And the general rule is you want to keep that cable as short as possible. Now, there may be some environments, let's say you're deploying outside, where you need to put your antenna very high up on a mask. But for maintenance purposes, you want to keep your access point down in a lower situation where it's more accessible. So you might need quite a long coax run. Well, that coax cable can introduce significant loss. And significant loss means that your coverage isn't going to be as good. So there's lots of reasons to use an external antenna. You maybe want to get coverage in a certain way that you just can't do with the internal antennas. It may be for aesthetic reasons that they want to hide the access point, but you can put an antenna discreetly on a ceiling or discreetly on a building. Like I mentioned before, the patch antennas, most people don't realize that those are antennas. They normally think it's like a security system or something like that. Also, quite often you can see patch antennas can be painted over or sometimes people put wallpaper over them, so they almost disappear. So it may be that you 
have a very high ceiling. You see this sometimes in some warehousing and some factory environments. Ceiling is very, very high, but you need to deploy the access point and the antenna a little bit lower in order to get better coverage. And so quite often they use an external antenna so they can run a cable down perhaps to a lower point. I mentioned the maintenance issues. There also might be some environmental considerations where maybe you can use an outside antenna and house your access point indoors. And so you run a cable going outside to the outside antenna. So I mentioned early on the issue with the megaphones where it pushes all your energy in one direction, giving that example is when you create a beam. So one of the things that people often get confused on is when you're forming a beam, they think, well, the energy is going further and therefore the signal must be amplified. This is not the case. Antennas are passive. There is no increased energy. All the antenna is doing is taking the energy that it receives from the access point via the cable and pushes it into certain patterns, certain directions. So it's the same energy and the only reason it goes further is rather than radiating around the cell is being pushed into one direction. So remember that antennas are passive. They are not amplifying your signal. So when do you deploy those omnidirectional antennas, sometimes just referred to as omni antennas? So remember, this is when your radiation pattern is 360 degrees, that donut shape. So you deploy them in large open areas, such as you'd find in an office environment. Retail environments like shopping malls are very good for omni antennas, as is manufacturing plants. Also outside areas such as parks, etc. And then you've got directional antennas. And here's a great example of a conference room. You might say, well, that's an open area. Why don't I put an omni antenna in there? Well, quite often you would put a directional antenna when you're doing a conference room and you'd actually put it on the outside wall. And the reason is, is it actually will give you better coverage in that room and it doesn't spill so much outside, especially a conference room where maybe you're a little bit concerned about security, etc., and the spillover outside of the windows. So this is a way of focusing that energy in towards the conference